What's going on guys? Shania Twain here again and coming back at you with another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Minnesota Vikings. We're doing a realistic rebuild of the Vikings, so fairly realistic moves only. And here is the kicker for the Minnesota Vikings is their quarterback situation is among the strangest I've ever seen. They have three viable starting options and maybe it didn't appear that way at the start of the season, but Case Keenum has really been playing at a high level. And then you take a look at Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Bradford, and Sam Bradford played so well at the start of the season, but Teddy Bridgewater is supposed to be your franchise guy. Going to be very interesting to see what we can do here with this Minnesota Vikings team. That's very, very good. Just got to take them to the next level, figure out what they're doing at that quarterback spot. Here is the team. We're going to go ahead and, and get everyone back in here because we don't play with injuries on. So we have an interesting option at a number of different positions. As the Vikings are deep at a lot of positions for seemingly no reason. You look at quarterback, they have three very viable starting options. You look at running back with Latavius Murray, Dalvin Cook, Jarek McKinnon. Somewhat viable starting options. Maybe not Jarek McKinnon so much, but uh, the others for sure. And I think in this one, and in these realistic rebuilds, I'm going to start utilizing the trade block a little bit more. People have suggested that to kind of spice things up a little bit. So that's what we're going to start doing. Andrew Sandejo is kind of a weird player. What is he, 28? 29. He's not, he's not bad, though. Terrence Newman is super old. 38, I think. He's 38. <laughs> it's just such an interesting team. Sheree Floyd is healthy in this one, so that's cool. We got Daniel Hunter, Brian Robinson, hook him horns on that one. What do we do with Trey Waynes? I'm not really sure. But I think I am going to start utilizing the trade block. And I think I'm going to add Andrew Sandejo to the trade block. 83 speed. Ugh. I think I'm going to add Sam Bradford to the trade block as he could very uh, easily get traded for the Vikings as so many teams are in need of a quarterback. I'm going to add Latavius Murray to the trade block. And I think that's going to be it. Pat Elfline should be a higher overall, I think. But yeah, let's go ahead and advance a week, see if we have any offers on these guys. So the only trade offers I'm receiving, I'm pretty sure everyone is where they're supposed to be, they are, is for Sam Bradford, 29-year-old quarterback out of Oklahoma. Jets are offering me a first-round pick. And that's feasible as well. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. A one, was that a one next year? It may have been. At least a one and a seven for Sam Bradford. Decent start. I also added Case Keenum to the trade block, and we have offers for Andrew Sandejo. Now, this is where like the kind of rebuild part comes in because it probably isn't realistic that the Vikings would put up just players in the trade block and start accepting trades. Although I think there's no way they keep all three of these quarterbacks. And you know, it's a video game, it's mad. We might as well accept what we can for these players while we still can. And my offers for Case Keenum Ooh, first round from the Broncos next year. Or would I rather a second this year? I'm not even getting that as an option. Let's go ahead and accept this first round pick next year, as well as a fourth and a seventh from the Broncos. And that's probably we have some uh, for Sam Bradford also. Sharif Floyd's going to be a free agent. I'm just going to go to the midseason mark, though. So Sharif Floyd is our number one free agent. Who else is here? Who else are impending free agents? Joe Berger, 35 years old. I don't want him. Jarek McKinnon, I do want. Teddy Bridgewater, I want. Probably don't want 38-year-old Terrence Newman. Teddy Bridgewater and Sharif Floyd are back. I think it's it might be Joe Berger. That sounds more right to me. And then Jarek McKinnon wants more salary which I'm not prepared to offer him right now. But that's not to say that I won't in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and spend some of this Coach XP. I'll see you guys for the playoffs. We are 6-2, and two, currently on pace to make it. So we managed to just barely sneak into the playoffs at 9-7. and seven. That is not a tremendous amount of XP for anyone on this team. Although Dalvin Cook does. I probably should have started him. That is uh, a lack of judgment on my part. Yeah, not a whole lot of XP. I never looked at trades for Andrew Sandejo. I completely forgot about that. That was a mistake. Unfortunate. What can you do? Let's go ahead and check out the stats, figure out how this team went 9-7. 3,500 yards for Teddy B. 
Man, Kyle Slaughter, what a performance. 25 touchdowns, 8 picks. Rushing Latavius Murray, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Dalvin Cook had 12. They could put the ball on the ground seven combined times. Dalvin Cook's my gonna be uh, my new starting running back. I didn't realize he wasn't. I mean, I guess I did. I just didn't. I didn't think about it. Jarius Wright. Jarius Wright had 13 touchdowns. 913 yards for him. What in the world? That's fairly ridiculous. Blocking. Decent amount of sacks led up all around. Defensively, Eric Kendricks led our team in tackles with 102. Tackles for loss, 13 from Linval Joseph, 8 from Sharif Floyd, quarterback sacks, 12 from Everson Griffin, 7 from Linval Joseph, I think Daniel Hunter had 6. Interceptions, 4 for Rhodes closed, 4 for the 38-year-old Kansas State corner, formerly of the Cowboys and the Vikings, 4 interceptions for him, 3 for Sandejo, 2 for Trey Waynes, I'm going to keep Trey Waynes. Defensive touchdowns, we have 0, I, I missed 4 fumbles. Three for Terrence Newman, two for Xavier Rhodes, two for Everson Griffin, who also had two recoveries. The wild card playoff matchup is against the New Orleans Saints. Can we advance to the divisional? Does Drew Brees beat us? He does. All right, that's fair. Um, let's go ahead and advance to the offseason. See what we can do there. So it's time, finally, I think, to bring back Jarek McKinnon. I do want him to return. Yeah, Joe Berger retired. Let's improve the salary, I guess. Accept or don't accept. That's kind of a large cap hit for a backup running back. But that's what the situation is. We re-sign him. And yeah, Latavius Murray can get traded, I guess. I don't know. It seems like no one wants him. There's no one particularly interesting in free agency. So I'm going to go ahead and avoid that altogether. I think Terrence Newman retired as well, so that's fine. Simulating that to the next week, I'm going to do some scouting, and I will see you guys for the NFL Draft. We're going to need to have a good one. Here we are in the draft. We should have, like, what, 19th or something like that? 21st. Oh, that's right. We were we were a playoff team. Let's go ahead and simulate to our pick. Hopefully, we can land a good player. All right, the only player here that I might take is a right end, and I don't really need a right end. So we're going to go ahead and establish a new era of trading down. And I think we're going to do it with either the Bears or the Redskins. The Redskins must have performed horrifically. Yeah, they had the second overall pick. And the Bears with Trubisky. I'm not going to take that chance. Trubisky could end up being pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and accept that first round pick from the Redskins next year. And that should end up being an extremely valuable pick that we'll take for year number three. Well, it'll be in the, like, the year two draft, but going into year three. Let's see who's available now in the second. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take Evan Westmoreland out of Princeton. Knowledgeable fellow. Decent overall combine, but it's really the top three skills that matter to me. And he's fairly good in all those departments. He is a 77 overall. I will take that. 36 in the draft. We take him at 53. 86 strength, 79 run block, 83 pass block. 87 impact blocking with 77, uh, 76 acceleration, 66 speed. That awareness is low, but that's going to bring up his overall. So that is a very solid pick here late in the second round as we advance now into the third. With this pick, I'm going to go ahead and take Brady Searles out of UNLV. Good top three skills. He's a fourth round guy. Very strong. Not all that fast. But he gets the job done. Top three skills. He shows me that he can do it. We need another better receiver to pair with the killer combo of Diggs and uh, Thielen. So if I could play him in the slot, I, he's not a slot guy. If I could play Stefan Diggs in the slot or Adam Thielen in the slot and have Brady Searles on the outside or Searles. Oh, okay. Wow. He has superstar development. I was not expecting anything close to what we got. We had a 74 overall player with almost no speed, no spectacular catch, but he's very, very well-rounded. And that superstar development is interesting as well. Interesting. We'll find a spot for me. It's superstar development, so he has to play now. That's pretty much what that's guaranteed. The offensive lineman was a fourth-round guy, and uh, he is no longer on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and take a future three, and I will take that from the Colts, and then simulate. I have a sixth and a seventh. I plan on taking two more players, so that works out fairly well. They're both seventh-round guys, so I'm almost certainly going to be able to draft both of them. Here is one Henry Sherrills out of Hawaii, a right guard. Great top three skills. That's all I care about. And he is an excellent pick. 66 overall. There should be 66. 66 overall in the class. 
75 overall as a player. 79 strength is low, but 86 run block, 79 pass block, 85 impact blocking. Very, very similar to um, our other offensive line pick in this draft class. The wide receiver I wanted is gone, so we're going to go ahead and take TJ Papas Fritas here out of Stanford. Decent top three skills. He's going to be really weak. 75 strength. Still a good pick, but I mean, like, what else am I going to do with the seventh at that range? I could trade up for a six next year and make that a five the year after that. Wasn't really something I was interested in doing. Or I guess I probably could have made it a three. And for these realistic rebuilds, I will change the name of the prospects if they're at a super fun position. No one really fits the criteria. Um, left guard. Well, we're going to go ahead and change his name. Who should I make you? Right, we went ahead and changed him to David Sills. I think the last name kind of makes sense. Both, or not both, but he's a wide receiver out of West Virginia. Probably going to go somewhere in that third round area. So he's going to be a solid receiving option for us. And I think, actually, we're going to play him in the slot. Why not? Doesn't make sense, but that's just what we're going to do. I'm not going to make Stefan Diggs my slot receiver. Actually, you know what? I will. Because Jarius Wright slayed in the slot. So... Stefan Diggs probably will too. This is the new look team. Not a ton has changed. I actually do need to sign a backup quarterback. And I need Latavius Murray to be traded. I need uh, my depth chart to stop being reordered. So I'm going to have to go ahead and do that manually. Defensively, I mean, we haven't really developed all that much, which is unfortunate. But it's, you know, the way she goes. We haven't really improved on defense at all was not a great draft for defense or defense or just weren't players that I wanted I didn't have the picks but I have more picks now should be able to land some more players who will help this team get better okay decent fullback option in free agency Justin Santos out of Oregon 81 overall rookie welcome to the team Latavius Murray has some trade offers I'd like something this year so we're looking for 2019 and there are no 2019 offers coming through. So I will go ahead and accept the Redskins pick next year to two and a seven. This is the team for season number two. Interesting looking squad. We've improved on the offensive line at least, although Mike, Rever Mike Remmers is terrible. I don't know how he's really played this season, but he's been awful in the past. We need to improve on the defensive side of the ball in this next year. Eric Kendricks is still a viable starting option for us, but he's just not that high of an overall. The defensive line is sick. We have to get better in the secondary. A lot. We like we can't work with what we're working with right now. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. Five and two at the midseason mark. Stefan Diggs is clearly an impending free agent. Gonna want to bring him back. Who else is here? Anthony Barr, Neil Hunter. I saw Trey Waynes, Eric Kendricks. Interesting. So I've re-signed Daniel Hunter, Anthony Barr, and Stefan Diggs. I have not done anything with Trey Waynes or Eric Kendricks yet. I really have to decide what I want to do there because both of these players are going to need more XP and they're going to need to perform better if they're going to stay on this team because right now that's just not going to do it for me. So we would end up going 11-5, and five, which was uh, good enough for top of the division. However, we're still forced to play the wild card as I guess at least two teams perform better overall-wise. Teddy Bridgewater, a little bit over 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Rushing Dalvin Cook, 1,300 yards, 12 TDs. Jarek McKinnon, 10 touchdowns as well as that backup. Interesting. David Sills led our team in catches with 86, 947 yards, and 9 touchdowns as a rookie. Adam Thielen, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Stefan Diggs, 900 yards, and 7 touchdowns. So very, very similar numbers for all of our receivers there. Blocking. We got to improve on the offensive line, especially at tackle. Speaking of tackles, Eric Kendricks led our uh, defense in tackles with 119. Tackles for loss would be 18 from Linval Joseph. Quarterback sacks, 10.5 from Daniel Hunter, 8.5 from Linval Joseph, 8 from Everson Griffin, 7 from Sharif Floyd. Interceptions, 3 from Anthony Barr and Xavier Rhodes, 2 for Mackenzie Alexander and Eric Kendricks. Force fumbles, we have 2 from a number of players. Not going to bother looking through all those. And then one defensive touchdown. I clicked way too fast. I didn't see who it was. Uh, I am curious. I'll go back. Phillip Rivers wins MVP of the 12-4 and four Chargers. Jacoby Bursett at the... What? Okay. Interesting. Um, 
NFC Office Player of the Year is Aaron Rodgers. Any Vikings know? Defense Player of the Year, Cam Jordan. We have Eric Kendricks in there at number nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Graham Cozier. Cozier of the Saints. 83 overall for him. David Sills at number two. Ugh. Defensive Rookie of the Year. We didn't have anybody. So there you go. I do want to see who got this defensive touchdown. I am curious. It's going to bother me if I don't see. So that did end up being... Let's go ahead. That's downs played. It was Trey Waynes. Okay. I was getting ready for the offseason, but I forgot we are in the wild card playoff round. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this XP that we have. 63k for the rookie out of WVU. Where did you get all that from? It doesn't show. How do you have 66k? Oh, Pro Bowl. I don't know why I didn't see that at first. Okay. This is the upgraded team. Players are playing with confidence, so their overall is a little bit inflated. Like Sills, for example, is up to an 87 overall, David Sills. And then defensively, I mean, nothing insane. There's like almost no progression at all from anyone defensively uh, from the first game, first you know time we saw this team, I guess a season ago. But here we go, wildcard playoff against the Packers. Can we advance to the divisional we do? to face the Seattle Seahawks. I wonder if Teddy B got player of the week. No, he didn't, no XP. All right, can we beat the 12, three and one Seahawks to advance to the conference championship? We do not, okay. Apparently it's a truly devastating loss in the lower left, which I, yeah, I guess kind of, but we're looking, we're looking to the future, better and brighter things with a better team. And we need, we'll really deserve to be there because that Seahawks team is they got some decent players over there. But here we go. Off season. This is our fullback. Yeah, 84 Justin Santos. See, I don't really want to bring back Eric Kendricks because he's 27 years old and he doesn't really have much XP. He's not developing well at all. It's really kind of a trash situation. I'm going to bring him back anyways, though. Uh, I'm going to let Trey Waynes walk, though. Another 27-year-old player. I just could do without him. He's not very good. I would just want good linebackers and free agency that I can add to the team. Mike Evans is here. Oh, boy. Okay. Don't need Mike Evans, unfortunately. But I could do with Brandon Scherf as one of our big signings. All right, so we actually came out and signed Brandon Scherf and HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. Hashan is going to play strong safety, though, over Andrew Sandejo. I think he's going to fit in pretty well over there. He does have quick development, so that's good. We signed two, I think, quality free agents here in this class, which is something I don't usually do. But they're very helpful to the team. We needed to get better on the offensive line. I'm probably going to play Brandon Scherf at tackle. He played tackle at Iowa. So he's going to go ahead and slide over to left tackle. That's cool. All right, so the offensive line is improved. We also improved the secondary, obviously, with the addition of HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. 81 overall, strong safety, but the quick development is kind of what made me go after him. Still need to get better at the linebacking core. I could do with an outside linebacker and, of course, have to address cornerback. And we do have some really, really quality picks. So we'll see what those, where those are. They should be quality. We have the number six overall pick, maybe another top 10. We have the ninth as well and the 14th. Okay, and the 26th. We have a lot of first round picks. Trading down has actually helped us out. I'm not really a huge fan of having so many picks in the realistic rebuild. I didn't realize that trading down would offer us so many. I'm not complaining though, really, am I? I don't think so. I'm gonna go ahead and trade this pick down as well. I know that seems to be all we're doing, but this is not a great draft class for the positions that I need. Now it's all about deciding what offers us the best value at this stage. I could do with a first rounder next year, obviously. And I'll take it from the Browns. A one, this is honestly ideal. A one, a two this year, it should be next year, and a three this year. I will gladly accept that. And now I will take Christian Eaton out of Ohio State. Fits the scheme perfectly. He can replace Ben Gideon. Really like this player. Great top three skills. Really good combine as well. Not the fastest, but 474 speed is still quite decent. Strong, quick. Should be a great linebacker. He's a 78 overall. 
ranked 15th in the class. We take him at 9. 82 speed, 86 tackle, 88 block shit, 86 hit power. Not amazing, but not, not terrible either. Not bad. I hate to keep doing this, but this is just one of the worst draft classes I've ever seen. So I'll take a first rounder next year. Let's do it with the uh, the Redskins also picking up a third in the process. With this pick, I'm going to take Gregory Connor with plans to play him at left, or excuse me, at right tackle. 21 years old out of Ohio. Good top three skills. Very, very strong, which is why I like him a lot. And here he is, 80 overall quick development. That's what I'm talking about. 91 strength, 88 run block, 77 pass block, 91 impact blocking. He should be an excellent tackle, and that quick development is awesome as well. Oh, we got a baller, Alan Hubbard. He plays defensive tackle. He could be great depth. He skipped the combine. I'm all in. Here he is. Good pick. Ranked number 23 in the class. Drafted him at 58. I do love me a good baller, and we've seen so few this year. A baller, by the way, is someone who says, uh, who tells Roger Goodell to go screw himself. Oh, censored. And, uh, and skips the combine. Also, again, terrible draft class. I'm going to trade down. I just, I really don't want to take these picks, though. There's no one in this draft class at all, especially a team needs. It is so bad. I think people are going to be understanding of how bad a class is. I'm not just going to take a player just to, to take him. I'm going to trade down again. I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but it's so important to draft good players. And I'm not going to waste these picks. I'll see you guys at the end of the draft. So pretty obviously here, the only player I'm going to uh, change is Christian Eaton. We're going to change him to uh, 2019 NFL Draft Prospect. And that's probably the last year that we're actually going to change names. Which is, it's a really weak uh, draft class for, for this realistic rebuild. Last year and this year, unfortunately. But that's just the way she goes sometimes, unfortunately. It's just, it happens. So we did end up changing it to Kendall Joseph, a linebacker out of Clemson. Now, the thing with Kendall Joseph is um, he's an inside linebacker, but in a 4-3, I think we can easily convert him over to the outside. So he could easily be the top linebacker taken in next year's class. I think it works out for our purposes here. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd rather play him than, than Ben Gideon due to, uh, due to age and due to potential. This is the team, though, that we're going to use for season number three. It isn't phenomenal, but I think it's it's fairly good. Hold on, we took, who did we draft? We drafted Connor. Connor's gonna play right tackle. That's what I have to do. Okay, that's the only change I'm gonna make. I will make sure that he's starting no matter what, and then I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Three and four at the midseason mark is underwhelming. That's where we are though. Kyle Rudolph looks to be a, an, uh, an impending free agent. Who else is here that we might wanna bring back? Oh, pretty much nobody, okay. We actually missed out on the playoffs. Going six and 10, how? How does this team go six and 10? Especially with Pro Bowl Stefan Diggs, clearly made the Pro Bowl there with that XP. What about David Stills, you make the Pro Bowl? Doesn't appear that you did it. Whatever, he has a lot of XP. This is a good team and this is not a six and 10 team. It just isn't. I know our cornerbacks are weak but that really can't make us go 6-10. and 10. That's ridiculous. All right, the stats look like this. 4,300 yards for Teddy Bridgewater, 32 touchdowns, 15 picks. That's our problem. Teddy Bridgewater has just not been good enough. Dalvin Cook, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. Receiving Stefan Diggs, killer season, 1,300 yards, nearly 1,400, 6 touchdowns, 94 receptions for him. Adam Thielen, 7 TDs. David Sills, over 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns defensively. Eric Hendricks led our team in tackles with 131. Tackles for loss would be 16 from Linval Joseph. Quarterback sacks, 12 from Everson Griffin, 11.5 from Daniel Hunter, 9.5 from Sharif Floyd. Interceptions, 4 from Xavier Rhodes. Uh, this is not a, a good performing team. It just isn't. Oh, two defensive touchdowns from somebody who made them. Xavier Rhodes. I, I can see it. Leonard Fournette wins MVP. Of the 13 and 3 Jaguars. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Alvin Kamara. Two Cowboys in there. Um, none from our team, though. No Vikings. Aaron Donald wins Defensive Player of the Year. No Vikings. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Christian Klein. No Vikings. Defensive Rookie of the Year, 
Will Zellner. We didn't even draft anybody. And then Kendall Joseph. So I got a random guy at cornerback finishes higher than somebody who started. Oh boy. What is going on here? The one way I see salvaging this for the final season is we have to sign a stud cornerback. That saves it, because that's like the one real weak part on our team is cornerback. We have Xavier Rose and then nobody. If we can sign a stud cornerback, because we have money to do so. If we can sign a stud cornerback, we're golden. Yannick Ngakwe would be cool. Oh, a keep the lead might be my best option. Kendall Fuller I could do, maybe. All right, so I brought in Kendall and pretty much just for the storyline implications, Kyle Fuller. I think that's kind of cool that we have two brothers playing on the same team now, and they're like major upgrades to the team. So, I mean, it's a good-looking team. We still need to improve at linebacker. I'm going to use some of this XP so we have a better assessment of where we are. Spend that all in the block shed, probably, because that is so bad. You have to an 81. He's just not good. So now in the draft, we should have a lot of picks. Number three, number six, number 17. That's still a lot of picks. All right, let's simulate to our pick. We need to get better at linebacker. Still, I think, at cornerback, at safety even. This is a sick player. I might not be able to let this guy pass up. Barry Graham out of Penn State, 6'6". Six, six. Blazing speed, awesome top three skills, insane vertical. All right, just adding to our sick receiving core, now we have an awesome fourth. And I know, are you really going to take a fourth option guy at number like three overall? And the answer is yes. When there's no one in this particular range to fill my needs, we're going to take the best player available. That is Barry Graham here. And he is pretty good. 80 overall, six, six, six foot six, of course. 91 speed, 80 route running, 86 catch, 90 excel, 89 catch in traffic, 90 spectacular catch, 95 jumping. <laughs> what an absolute monster. This is unfair. With this pick, I'm taking Howard Freeman out of Auburn. Six foot one is great size for the cornerback position. He's fast as hell at a 4 4 6, 40 yard dash speed, B plus press, B plus man, B zone, amazing top three skills. Here he is. 81 overall superstar development. That's what I'm talking about. Finally. Sick nickel cornerback, 91 speed, 86 man, 83 zone, 88 press. Oh, he's insane. Love it. All right, Keith McKinnon, you look good enough. Need you to play inside linebacker. Out of Notre Dame, Keith McKinnon, please. God, slow development, you're killing me. He's a 70 yard overall. He wasn't particularly bad. I only glanced at his stats. Oh, I needed him to be sick, though, and slow development is not helping me out. Tori and Duncan, make up for it. You look awesome. Please. Interesting. 73 overall, but quick development. Uh, okay. We're going to beef up the defensive line with this pick. Henry Copeland out of Pitt. 78 overall. He's just good depth. We're pretty much going to be finished with this draft. No one's really all that talented down the board. And uh, pretty much got the players we were looking for. Just did not get all that much better at linebacker. And that was the main, main position of need. Tough. Just nobody good. <laughs> that's, that, that's what it was. No one was good. Like, Keith McKinnon's good. He's really good. Just the slow development is so killer to see. I'm going to move Kendall Joseph to inside linebacker. And Eric Kendricks can either back up or ride Pine because he is not good enough to start he just isn't quick development i, th I think he has quick development right kendall joseph do you not have quick he is normal oh he's up to an 81 though after upgrading him so that's a good thing need to upgrade everybody else and we need good performances freeman was such a sick draft pick it's unbelievable we needed that from a position of, of need like not that it's not because that what kind of was but I don't know. We, just, we need players to step up here. We're making the playoffs. We've got to win the Super Bowl, man. Teddy Bridgewater. I'm just not seeing it from him. I'm not. This is the team for the final season. Wait, did Adam Thielen really regress this much? Because he's 30 years old. I guess he must have. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, it is what it is, though. I mean, Hobgood Shittick. All right, whatever. Um... <laughs> We got a pretty good team, pretty good group of players. I think we're going to be able to perform pretty well. 
Uh, Kendall Joseph definitely has to start at inside linebacker. Should be able to make plays. I think so. People are developing fairly nicely. Some are regressing. You look at uh, Everson Griffin, who's gone down a bit. Even Xavier Rhodes has. And uh, he's just turned 30. So that's unfortunate. But again, that is what it is. I think we're going to do as best as we can here. I signed Greg Zerline and Matt Bosher in free agency. I forgot to show you. I mean, I guess I really just didn't think it was important. Regardless, though, I will see you guys uh, for the playoffs. We're going to simulate straight there. All right, here we go. Coming up on week 16. Week 17, I should say. And the playoffs. And we didn't make the playoffs. What? We went 8-8. Eight and eight. Oh, my, my controller fell. Ugh. Honestly fitting. Teddy Bridgewater is the third most passing yards in the NFL. 4,833 touchdowns. Still threw 17 interceptions. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Dalvin Cook, 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Jarek McKinnon, 12 TDs. Receiving... Three 1,000-yard receivers. None had 10 touchdowns. Um, that's unfortunate. Three touchdowns for the rookie. Defensively, Kendall Joseph led our team in tackles with 142. Tackles for loss, 15 from Linval Joseph. Quarterback sacks, no one had over 10. Interceptions, not that many from anyone. <laughs> oh, my God. What is going on? Man, I hate to end it there, but... What an absolute disaster this has been. And I know it's just Madden simulation. I can't get mad because I uh, I have made the team better in terms of overalls at each position. Everyone is better slash the same at least because Eric Kendricks, I tried to make work. He just didn't. I tried to make Ben Gideon work for a season. That didn't work out. Kendall Joseph didn't really progress too much. Um, at the defensive line, Everson Griffin only regressed. Sharif Floyd kind of stayed about the same. Linval Joseph was a good option, though. Uh, Daniel Hunter, he developed a little bit. Ha -ha Clinton Dix did not. I tried to work with Andrew Sandejo for a minute. Didn't really work out. Offensive line, very much improved. That's one thing I can build, is O-line. <laughs> Kyle Rudolph developed a bit, and I built a sick receiving core. I think the main problem, though, is this guy right here. Teddy Bridgewater, I took him because he was the youngest, best option. First at quarterback, and he just didn't develop at all. He's just really bad in the game. For example, we have 15k XP here. You go in to upgrade him, everything is pretty expensive. Like, look at the accuracies. 8k nearly to upgrade deep accuracy to an 85. So I upgrade that to a 90. Upgrade awareness. He goes up to an 87. I mean, it was pretty much back and forth the entire rebuild, trying to get him up to a significant overall. And it just, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Sometimes that'll happen. That was just... That was unfortunate. I can't do anything about Madden Sim. I tried to make the team better. I'm not going to make excuses. It's whatever. It is what it is. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.